Well, Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. We may never be done with Trump. The late night host spoke about Trump's farewell speech in which he wished us all to have a good life. <laughs> Jimmy Fallon said, I know a lot of you were expecting Trump's speech to be weird and inappropriate. Well, you were 100 percent right. Seth said, have a good life. That's not a presidential farewell. That's what your high school crush writes in your yearbook as a final twist of the knife. I guess we won't be seeing each other with me going to Bryn Mawr and you staying here to chase your kickboxing dreams. So have a good life. Seth with a good one here. Former President Trump concluded his remarks at the send off at Joint Base Andrews by telling the crowd, quote, we'll see you soon. We were about to say the same thing, said the Southern District of New York. Trevor Noah said, I do like how he said he'll be back in some form because my man knows you got to leave on a cliffhanger. Kimmel, that's ominous. What form? A Demo Gorgon? A Horcrux? Maybe he'll come back as the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Seth, in some form, what does that mean? Whenever you see a black plastic bag stuck in a tree or a vulture on the shoulder of the highway pulling the guts out of a dead raccoon... That'll be me. Corden, well, at least he made it sound as creepy as possible. Corden, again, this is like the end of a bad movie where the villain says he will return, and you're like, I don't think this one's getting a sequel. <laughs> and Joe List said it looks like Garth Brooks also has friends in high places. Stephen Colbert was live the other night after the inauguration and said, well, you did it. You survived the last four years, and your reward, a shiny new olds president. Today we were reality boarded and I am here for it. How do you repair the past? Have we tried unplugging it and plugging it back in? Because that works with almost everything else. Hey, remember when the Secret Service was investigating John Mulaney? Yeah, that's a thing that happened. They were investigating him over jokes believed to be made about, I don't want the Secret Service investing in my podcast, about, you know, the kind of person that the Secret Service would investigate if you made, you know, jokes about him, which I'm totally not doing. I'm just reading a news story about when John Mulaney did that for, you know, a person that, you know, recently switched jobs. You know who I'm talking about here. Mulaney had revealed last month that the Secret Service had investigated the comedian and SNL alum for inappropriate jokes about, you know, that guy. After he made a joke about Roman dictator Julius Caesar, who was stabbed to death by a group of senators on the Ides of March, something here at Daily Comedy News we do not condone. The joke was, another thing that happened under Julius Caesar, he was such a powerful maniac that all the senators grabbed knives and they stabbed him to death. That would be an interesting thing if we brought that back now. Mulaney made that joke on Saturday Night Live on February 29th, 2020. The Secret Service noted other remarks during the monologue, including, I asked my lawyer if I could make that joke. He said, let me call another lawyer. And that lawyer said, yes, I don't dwell on politics, but I dislike the Founding Fathers immensely. I hate when people are like, God has never created such a great group of men than the Founding Fathers. Yeah, the 92 Bulls, that's a perfect metaphor for the United States. When I was a boy, the United States was like Michael Jordan 1992. Now the United States is like Michael Jordan now. Two days later, law enforcement officials contacted the global chief security and senior vice president of NBC Universal to express the agency's desire to discuss the joke with the comedian's attorneys. Apparently, the Secret Service file included a report from Breitbart entitled SNL colon John Mulaney jokes that senators should stab, you know, that person like Julius Caesar. The investigation was opened in March. It closed in December. The Secret Service file now notes that Mulaney made no direct threats towards that person. Mulaney told Kimmel a while back, I didn't say anything about him. In terms of risk assessment, no one who's ever looked at me thought I registered above a one. I've been making jokes about him since 2007, and I've been making fun of him for 13 years. They said, if it's a joke, then I am cleared by the Secret Service. So following the Trump presidency, there were several recaps about whether or not Trump was good for comedy. I'll be picking at these articles for probably the next week. The first one comes from Vulture, and they talk to our old friend Sarah Cooper. You know, Sarah, she used to pantomime to Donald Trump videos on TikTok. She said, was Trump good for comedy? Yes and no and no and yes. I would not be here without Trump. So if you like me, you would say, yes, he was good for comedy. If you hate me, you'd say no. On the other hand, I would say he wasn't for the obvious reason that comedy sometimes is about heightening and exaggeration. And he heightened and exaggerated beyond a point that would make sense for any normal thinking human being. So that was bad for comedy in that someone like Alec Baldwin, who's very talented, but his impersonation just didn't even seem crazy enough. It didn't even match the level of crazy that we were dealing with. Sarah said, still, because Trump took that away from us, now we have to innovate in a way that we wouldn't have had to before. You can't just do A to B to C. You've got to do A to something else you haven't even thought of yet, because that's the only thing that's going to keep people interested in the next millennia of comedy. 
I think my videos revealed something that other impressions didn't. Mimicry tells you what you already know. My videos told you something else. The something else was just a woman like me speaking like this is so bizarre. It's so bizarre. So you're really listening closer and you're watching closer in a way that by April 2020, we had sort of tuned out because Trump was so freaking annoying that we didn't even want to deal with him anymore. A lot of the feedback I got was, I love that you make no attempt to look like him because I cannot stand to look at him. Another part of it was just news. I made the first clip within two hours of that news conference, so some people saw that before they saw the original. So it was way to hear what he said. Sarah added, I don't like that my success is linked to Trump. I'm not that happy about it. So much so that I can't talk about it. But at this point, I'm so thankful for everything that's happened this year that I have to say, you know what? If this is how it happened, it's how it happened. If that's going to be part of my obituary, if the word TikTok is going to have to be in my obituary, then so be it. If the words Donald Trump have to be in there, then so be it. Because I feel like it's given me so much of an opportunity to really say things that I want to say and access to an audience that I didn't have before. So I can't knock it. Also from Vulture, Jenny Hagel knew Trump would affect her job as a writer for Late Night with Seth Meyers, but she didn't expect it to make her completely rethink how she approached joke writing. Jenny said Trump wasn't good from the experience of making comedy. So much is based on exaggeration as a comedic device, especially when you're writing about the news. The thing he does that you read about in the news is already the joke thing you would have made up about an incompetent president or racist person. Plus, some of the things he did were so horrifying, I didn't know the comedic way into it. Trump was so objectively bad for America and for human beings that saying he was good for comedy is like if you had a house fire and all your stuff burned and you were like, well, it's good for decluttering. I guess it was, but that's not the right question to be asking. Late night comedy will be better without him. I think, man, what a luxury to be able to write jokes about when Obama wore a tan suit. We dined on that for a week. Yeah, I remember when Obama wore a tan suit. I was enjoying the other day. There was a story about Joe Biden's Peloton. Apparently, it may be uh, insecure from a cyber standpoint. So that's our big scandal so far. Joe Biden's Peloton. May we all be so lucky that that stays as number one. Jenny says the important people the last four years have been the activists who have tried to stop what he's doing and the politicians who try to get some kind of decent legislation through. So I don't want to be like, look, we did a lot of important work. But I feel like it did make me think more about what I did in the tiny little corner of the universe that I'm in before Trump was elected. I felt like this guy's harmless. Who cares? I'm going to write a bunch of dumb jokes about his hair. And then after it made me think, okay, if someone's going to hear this joke, what do I want them to think about him? How do I want to frame him for the two seconds I have their attention with a joke? Even if something crazy happened, it made me want to keep my eye on the ball a little more like, all right. What's the real takeaway about him today? Her favorite moment of the last four years was Michelle Wolf's White House Correspondents' Dinner, where Michelle said, I don't think any of you hate him because you've used him all to sell your books and your magazines and your TV shows. Jenny says, I don't know if that was comedy, but I felt like it was a very great and honest response. From the AV Club, Arnold Schwarzenegger got the vaccine. There's a video of him in which he says the following, and I will not do an Arnold impression. Arnold said, all right, I just got my vaccine and I will recommend it to anyone and everyone. Come with me if you want to live. That's so great. That inspired the AV Club to suggest that other aging actors do vaccine videos. They want Clint Eastwood to say, go ahead, make my day, as he rolls up his sleeve. Al Pacino can introduce his little friend while holding a syringe. And Bruce Willis can do a celebratory yippee ki Mr. Falcon. Hey, you can support this show at buymeacoffee.com slash news. I got uh, three large iced coffees purchased for me by uh, someone who I know, and she listens every day and appreciate it. Uh, but I don't know how to pronounce. Is it Namehuto? Namajuto? There. Either way, I've definitely butchered it because both can't be correct. Let me know how I'm supposed to pronounce that. But I appreciate it. She writes, enjoy your show every day. Happy to show support in this way. If you'd like to support the show, you can do that at buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news. You can subscribe for free on Apple Podcasts or Overcast, wherever you get your shows. You can follow the show on Spotify. The weekend's coming up. Normal episodes after a pretty slow January for comedy news. I've got plenty of stuff to talk about. About over the next few days, uh, including tomorrow, a story about Dave Chappelle photo bombing a wedding. If you want to see the photo of that, it's pretty funny. It's up on all the social medias and the buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news page. So you can bounce over there or facebook.com slash daily comedy news or my Twitter, which is at DCN pod, because the horrible person who has at daily comedy news tweeted once and God help you if you can get through to Twitter support and ask like, hey, can I have that one? So it's at DCN pod on Twitter. That's it for today. See you tomorrow.